Blackbeard reached out to us to see if we wanted to review their Tap Tail Pro. And originally I just thought, you know what, this is a cool looking screen, let's play some retro games on there and let's see what happens. But I was very surprised to find out that I've actually been enjoying it for a lot of other things. So I want to share with you my experience and see if this is something you might like to pick up. As always, let's talk about the price and the specs. So you can get this tablet on Amazon for $139.99. It's running a custom version of Android 12 called Docky OS, which is a pretty clean experience. Uh, feels very much like a stock Android experience. The CPU is the Unisoc T606, which sits somewhere between the 310 and the 610 that's going to be in the Retroid Pocket 2S. So kind of in the middle of the two Retroid Pocket 2s. So for single core performance, it's not going to be as good as the 310, but for multitasking, it's going to be better. The GPU is the Mali G57. It's got 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of internal storage. You can also add an SD card up to one terabyte. It has SIM card support, so you could put a SIM card in there and use mobile networks. It's got a 16 by 10, 1200 by 1920 screen, and I guess that depends on what way you're holding the tablet. A 6580 milliamp battery that charges at 10 watts and I have mixed feelings about the battery. It lasts a long time but it doesn't have the best standby. Stereo speakers, a 3.5mm jack, 12 megapixel main camera which it's a tablet camera, you shouldn't expect too much. 5 megapixel front camera, USB Type-C, Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5.0. And while those specs aren't anything crazy, it is better than what you would expect to find in most budget tablets. Now, with those specs, it's not really going to blow you out of the water with the emulation capabilities. You're not really going to be able to do a lot of those higher end systems, but you're going to be able to do a lot of the retro systems and it's going to do a pretty good job of that. Now, with the other thing this tablet's really good for is actually productivity. Because of the RAM and the CPU in it, you're actually able to jump between tasks pretty seamlessly and it's still going to feel snappy. It doesn't feel like it's getting dragged down. So mostly I found myself doing things like surfing the web, drawing on it, reading, just uh, doing some Canva designs, you know, basic things like that. And it's a much better experience than when you would get on your phone because it's going to be a much larger. And of course, I was playing games on it because that's what we talk about on this channel. We review things based on how good they are at playing retro games. And the games I found myself mostly wanting to play on it were RPGs and things that actually were playable with the touchscreen. Because as I'll talk about later, you can definitely use a controller with it, but I kind of found that it was a little bit of a hassle to always have that with me and just found that some RPGs or some visual novels or games like that would play a lot better and we'll cover a little bit more of that later on. The tablet also has a PC mode that I tried using to test out and it basically gives you a somewhat Dex like experience if you've ever plugged in a phone like a Samsung phone to a monitor. It's something like that but I would say the idea is pretty cool, but it needs a little bit more time to bake in the oven. It got a little bit stuttery, but that could also just be me because I was using Canva on it and on some devices Canva can be a little bit resource intensive. I also had Google Chrome going and while I don't think it was a RAM issue, it could have just been me pushing the CPU a little bit too much. I don't know, it could have been one of many reasons, but basically it works, don't get me wrong. It's not broken or anything like that. It's very serviceable. And it's a cool addition, I'm glad it's there. But if you really want to push it, if you're a heavy multitasker, maybe stick to the regular Android mode because that seems to work a little bit more smoothly. And while this feature is really cool, I think it's time we move on, take a look at the actual build of the device, and let's start talking about some games. So taking a look at the build of the tablet, it has an aluminum body, which gives it a more premium feel than what you would expect on something like this. It has very minimal branding outside of the Blackview logo and this giant sticker that I'm assuming is there for legal reasons. It has a camera bump, which I'm not the biggest fan of because it sticks out a little bit more than I would have liked, even with a case on it, but it does give it a very nice premium look. There's really not much to talk about for the sides. Uh, there's this segment right here, which I'm assuming is a way to get in there if you do have to take it apart. On the bottom we have our SIM tray which this is also where you're going to put your SD card and potentially a SIM card. On the bottom we can also find our USB Type-C port, speaker and headphone jack. 
On this side, there's not a whole lot going on either, outside of what I think is a microphone. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's a microphone. Moving on to the top, we have our other stereo speaker, and we have our volume and power button. And if this was your first time seeing a tablet, well, welcome to 2023. This is what they look like. Isn't technology amazing? Now, moving on to the front of the tablet and the main attraction is the screen, we can find our front-facing 5 megapixel camera. Now, the screen is 16 by 10 and it's a pretty nice screen. Now, it's not a great screen. It's not going to blow you away. It's not an OLED screen, but it's a very good screen. It does do high definition because it is wide band level 1, so you are going to be able to enjoy your HD content. But it scratches pretty easy and there's this weird film over it, which I wasn't sure if it was a screen protector. I tried taking it off and I don't think that's supposed to come off. So if you do get this tablet, don't peel that off. <laughs> Use a screen protector. And if my camera actually focuses, you can see why I would think that. This definitely looks like a screen protector, but it's under pretty good. Now, at this point of the reviews, I'm usually talking about how the buttons feel, how the sticks travel, all that good stuff about handhelds that we love. But this is a tablet, so there's not a whole lot I can talk about as far as the ergonomics or anything like that. It's just going to feel like a giant phone. What I can say is it does feel very good in the hand, it's nice and light, the screen looks really good, and the aspect ratio is awesome. 16 by 10 is one of my favorite aspect ratios because it's great for everything. It's going to be really good for more modern games, but it's also going to be very good for retro games because of that taller screen. Now, what we can talk about though is the Android build, and this is a custom version of Android 12 called Docker OS, which it, there's really not a whole lot special going on here. It really just feels like a clean version of Android. It's very snappy. There's not a whole lot of bloatware. There are some custom modes like gaming mode and PC mode, but they don't really do that much. Like I showed earlier with PC mode, it just lets you multitask, which is pretty cool if you want to use the keyboard and mouse, but I think touch just works a little bit better here. And gaming mode doesn't really seem to do anything other than just keep it to certain apps, but that's about it. There's a phone app if you want to use the SIM card in here. I didn't do that. I didn't even try that out because I can just hotspot from my phone. But if you do want to try it out, make sure you check out Mint Mobile. Now back to the Android build. It is pretty cool. It's not just a regular Android just slapped on here. There are some public customizations like when you use the pull down menu, it's going to be on the right side of the screen. So it's going to be easier to interact with one hand. And it's also pretty easy to jump into PC mode from that menu. Getting out is a little bit of a pain though because there's really not a very easy way to do that. At least not that I found. I had to go back into settings and kind of find my way out of there. Now there is an option though that when you plug a keyboard in, it'll jump right into PC mode. And when you unplug it, it takes you out of it. But it didn't work for me. So that's one of the reasons why I'm saying this needs to kind of be developed a little bit more. It just doesn't feel like it's ready to be a main feature. But I think it's time we move on and start talking about some games. Now, as we all know, the first rule about talking about games is you never talk about games. The second rule is if you're going to play a game, you kind of need a way to control it. Now, what I'm about to say may shock a lot of you, but touchscreen controls aren't always terrible. I know I, I don't like him personally. I will avoid him whenever possible. But if you're going to be playing on a tablet or even a phone, there's quite a few games that are actually completely playable with the touchscreen. Things like RPGs or really anything that doesn't require any fast inputs is going to work just fine with the touchscreen. Now if what I've just said didn't immediately make you explode into rage and unsubscribe, let's actually talk about some controllers. So one of the most obvious options would be a telescopic controller. And while I do agree with Shem from Retrobreeze, who made a video about this tablet not too long ago, you should probably go check out. This iPad controller is probably your best bet if you're looking for a tablet controller. Now. This isn't my first iPega controller. Uh, this isn't even my first version of this controller that I've been using because I apparently don't make good financial decisions and I end up with multiples of the same thing that I don't like. The first one I had had the worst D-pad I've ever used. So I actually had a broken power A game controller that I took the D-pad out of and I kind of Frankenstein it into this one. But the D-pad wasn't the only bad thing about this. The triggers are also terrible. Just in general, it wasn't a very well-built controller. Now, the D-pad did make it better because that thing would almost cut your finger. And this one isn't going to draw blood. I still don't think you should have to do this with the controller that you just bought. Now, that didn't stop me from using this. As you can see, it's pretty beat up. But somehow, I forgot I had one and I ended up with the second one. A new revision, which does feel better. The material feels more... I don't want to use the word premium here. It just it has a better texture. The D-pad is improved from the original one. It's still not good. 
I, I don't like this D-pad. As you can see, they obviously made it not a weapon of self-inflicted pain. It's still not a good D-pad. It's just, it's, uh. But if this somehow doesn't turn you off from ever buying something from my Pega, this actually feels pretty good in the hand. It's a nice beefy controller and it's comfortable when it's not trying to steal your DNA. To get it on there, you have this locking mechanism that you have to adjust and then there's a spring. So once you get the tablet on there, it's pretty secure in there. Now, the problem I have with this setup is that it feels like it's tilting away and I'm not going to say this is going to fatigue my wrist or anything like that, but it is kind of annoying to constantly feel like you have to hold it up. Now, because this is a modern problem and I am somebody of modern solutions, I decided to do something about it. So I took my old controller and I modded it a little bit. Now, it didn't turn out great. It's not the prettiest thing to look at, but it is much more comfortable. It also makes it very clear why Valve put the controllers on the top part of the Steam Deck and why Asus did the exact same thing with the ROG Ally. For bigger handhelds, this is where the controllers should be. Now, I hope this illustrates why this, in my opinion, is a less than ideal solution for controlling on a tablet. It's just, it's not very easy to carry around. You already have a big tablet and it's going to be a huge controller. So what I recommend is just finding a smaller Bluetooth controller, something like the 8-Bit Duo SN30 Pro, in my opinion, is the perfect solution because it has the D-pad in the perfect spot. And I repeat, the perfect spot, especially with something like this tablet, where the majority of the games that you're really going to be able to enjoy are going to be retro games and a D-pad is going to be the best way to play those games. Now with this controller, you're still going to have everything a Pro Controller can do. It's just going to be a smaller form factor. If for whatever reason this is still too big for you or you just don't have a whole lot of space in your bag and you want to just go as light as possible, the 8-Bit Duo Lite 2 is probably going to be the best bet because it's still going to be able to do everything the other controllers can do, but it's even smaller. Now the D-pad's in the wrong spot, but if you're weird like that and you like that, hey, who am I to judge? But this isn't the only options out there. You can use an Xbox controller. You can use whatever's around. Just whatever's easiest for you, just use that. Also, don't forget touch controllers can work too if you're just playing some lighter RPGs or something that doesn't require fast input. Speaking of that, let's go talk about some games. First up, Android games. And it's an Android tablet, so it plays Android games. Let's move on. I guess I should elaborate a little bit more. It's going to play the majority of Android games. It's not going to do a great job with the high-end stuff, so something like Genshin Impact, it's really not going to be a good experience, which is why I didn't even really bother to show it here. It's going to be pretty patchy and it's going to run at a very low resolution, so I wouldn't even bother doing that. Now, if you're still curious about that and you want to see the game running here, I would head over to Retro Breeze's channel, check out that video, and while you're there, subscribe, which you should already be subscribed to him anyway. But wait till this video is done. Don't leave just yet. My video is better. But if you wanted to play something like Minecraft, that's going to work here no problem. If you want to play Horizon Chase Turbo, if you want to play Daddish, if you want to play one of the many, many Android games available, they're going to play no problem. It's just some of the higher end stuff. It's going to be a little bit too much for what this chip can do. Now, finally getting into retro games, if you wanted to play something like, let's say, Tech Mobile for the Game Boy and a bigger screen, I would first ask why you would want to do something like that. And then I would say maybe try something like Burger Time, it's going to be a better time anyway. Or something like Shantae, which is going to look really good in the screen because that's still one of the best looking Game Boy Color games ever made. I guess still is kind of a weird way to say it because there aren't any more Game Boy Color games being made. But still, that's a really good game, go play that. Now moving on to 16-bit, if you want to play anything from the 16-bit era, you're also going to be able to do it on this tablet without any problems. Even the harder to run Super Nintendo games were running no problem. And they look great on this screen and since it is a 16 by 10 screen with a taller aspect ratio it's going to fill up a lot more of the screen so you are still going to have some black bars on the side but nowhere near as bad as you would get with a 16 by 9 screen and that's the great thing about this aspect ratio is that really no matter what game you want to play it's going to use up most of the screen that's also the downside is that most games just aren't going to do the full screen but the black bars on the top and bottom are very minimal so they're really not a big deal but in my opinion, the system that's going to look the best on this tablet is going to be Game Boy Advance because of the 3x2 aspect ratio. It's just going to fill out most of the 16x10 screen. Plus, because it's such a high resolution screen, the games are going to look really good. They're going to look nice and sharp with good colors. Plus, the chip is more than powerful enough to play anything in the Game Boy Advance library. Moving on to the 3D systems, PlayStation 1 is another thing that it's just going to have no issues with. You're going to be able to play pretty much any game in the PlayStation 1 library upscaled 
maybe not 3x for all of them there are some that can get a little bit tricky but you're still going to be able to upscale them and again they're going to look really good on here for n64 same thing you're going to be able to play pretty much any n64 game now there are some games that are going to give you a little bit of trouble as in there might be some hitching here and there or some graphical issues that's just the nature of n64 emulation but i was able to play conquerors bad fur day 007 so some of the harder to emulate games which means pretty much everything in the library is going to be playable and i didn't really have to tinker with anything all i did was pick a game and started playing again like i said conquerors bad fur day had a little bit of a slowdown and 007 had some issues here and there but nothing that would really take away from the experience or make me think that these games aren't going to be playable Sega Saturn was a mess, there was a lot of glitches and you have to run it with a frame skip. It was just not a great experience but I guess that might be considered a feature since it would probably be more accurate to what the Saturn was actually like. But yeah anyway you are going to be able to get some Saturn games running here, it's not going to be a great experience and really I don't think there's a whole lot of Saturn games out there that are really that great so maybe I'm missing some. Go ahead and share some in the comments with me. Also Dreamcast is going to be playable, I just messed up with the footage so it's not going to be in here but yeah if you can get N64 running and Saturn you're going to be able to play pretty much any Dreamcast game you want to play. Moving on to PSP, the performance is solid, it's not great, uh, don't expect to upscale every single game. You are going to be able to play pretty much anything including the God of War games but you're not going to be able to run about 2 or 3x resolution. Those higher end games are definitely going to be a 1x game and on a bigger screen like this I don't think that's going to be the best experience but if you do want to play God of War and this is your only means of doing it you can definitely get that done. Now every other PSP game or actually the vast majority of them yeah you're going to be able to upscale them too maybe even 3 if it's a lighter game. Now moving on to GameCube and by extension PS3 if you wanted to get this tablet to emulate those systems I would say don't because those are just not systems that this chip is going to be able to emulate with any real capacity as far as like getting a lot of the library to be playable. There are definitely some games that are going to work like Pikmin, Mario Kart, uh, maybe Mario Sunshine if you're using PAL ROMs. Same thing for PS2 if you want to play some RPGs like the Persona games, those are going to work. But if you wanted to play something a little bit more intense, it's just not going to be a good experience. So I would say just don't get this tablet thinking that you're going to be able to get a lot of those games running. Consider whatever games you're able to play from those libraries an absolute bonus and you're going to have a much better time that way. Now that's not meant to be discouraging because you are going to be able to find some really good games that are going to run. It's just keep your expectations in check. If not, you're going to be disappointed. And I know I'm not actually showing any PlayStation 2 games right now. There were some issues with recording just like we Dreamcast and I'm sorry about that. That's completely on me and I will be better next time. Please excuse my shortcomings. Now the last systems I want to talk about are the dual screen systems like DS and 3DS and let's just get this out of the way for 3DS. Not a lot of games are going to play. It's just not powerful enough to be able to push those games and even if you were a lot of the action games just aren't going to be enjoyable. But for DS pretty much any DS game is going to be played. Now setting up DS with the controller and then have to use the touch screens it's just not the best time. Now if you want to use a stylus you can go ahead and do that but what I would recommend is to play mostly games like Ace Attorney or basically visual novels that you can get away with using a touchscreen. This is going to be a really good way of playing those games because you can just set both screens on top of each other and just have some buttons on the screen to be able to interact. The interaction is minimal and you don't really have to have any type of fast paced controls going so it's a good way of doing it. Now if you did want to play something like Rhythm Games which the DS had a bunch of games like that you can just use a stylus or even your finger and you're going to have a pretty good time with that. So just to wrap things up, would I recommend the Blackbeard tablet? I think if you're in the market for a budget tablet this is going to be one of the better choices out there because it's going to come down to basically this or something like a Fire tablet which those are pretty good tablets, we use those at home, they've been pretty good to us, no real complaints there outside of the fact that you're locked down to fire os so if you want access to google play or you want something more akin to a android experience then you have to do a lot of side loading and they've kind of locked things down a little bit more on that side so if you do want a tablet that's going to be similar in power but maybe a little bit snappier because of the more ram in this versus that tablet then yeah this is going to be a solid choice the screen is really good retro games look great on it performance is solid for the price you're going to be paying for it like i said around 140 bucks on amazon 
you do have that Amazon assurance that if something goes wrong, you're going to have that return window. So there's really not a whole lot negative to say here. It's just um, keep in mind expectations that you're not going to be getting, you know, the most powerful Android tablet we've ever seen. You're going to get a really, really good and solid feeling budget tablet. And if you're in the market for that, then yeah, definitely pick up one of these tablets. There's going to be a link in the description if you do want to grab one. And finally, if you did like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us grow and bring you more videos like this. I hope you have a great day and I hope this video was informative.